here we are. worship of Jesus together, whether you're online or here in person. I want to say that the very last uh, hymn we sing, uh, at the very end of the service, please clap to it during the chorus, and uh, both at home and here. Due to the threat of rain, as you can see our cloudy skies, we have postponed our outdoor meal and games that were, were supposed to be today to next Sunday. Uh, please uh, answer the flock note sent to you uh, about whether you can attend again next week or you couldn't this Sunday, can this coming Sunday. We had 55 uh, meals ordered, uh, 50, at least 55 people to be here today. and Maybe we'll have more if you will join us. We pray for the family of Camilla London who went to her Lord Friday. And uh, we'll pray during the prayers for her and her family and arrangements are still pending, and we'll let you know about that. We have added Laura Saffin to our prayers. She is having pre-scheduled surgery tomorrow. Just wanted to let you know why. Uh, let us now rise and begin our worship service.
We now gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us sing. Our lesson today, <clears throat> our lesson today is from the letter of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14, through chapter 3, verse 2. The author writes, Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. Please stand, if you are able, for the gospel. 
The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Mark writes, People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to him. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Young people, please come forward for a message. Right down there in the front row, please. Go, go over there and sit in the front row. Sorry about that. Thanks. Do you know that you are God's favorite people, you kids? Yes, you are. How do we know that? Well, we see that in our Bible lesson for today. It says that people were bringing kids like you to Jesus for Jesus to bless them. Then the disciples of Jesus got in the way. They thought the kids were bothering Jesus. But when Jesus saw the disciples act this way toward the kids, he was upset. He said to the disciples, let the little kids come to me and do not stop them. For the kingdom of God is filled with kids like these. Isn't that amazing? But then Jesus said more. He said, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. Wow. Jesus is saying that there is something about you kids that adults should pattern their thoughts and actions after. I wonder what that is. Let me ask you kids a question. Are your parents important to you? Raise your hand if they are. Good. Almost everybody. Are they the most important people in your life? Yes, indeed. I know when I was your age, when I was growing up, my parents were the most important people in my life. I trusted my parents. And I know you trust your parents, too. I think that's why Jesus loved the kids so much. He knew that their trust of their parents showed all adults that they should be just as trusting of God. Just as trusting of God, their parent, as you kids are toward your parents. So trust your parents, kids, and trust God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we're very thankful that you have brought us together in your name. We pray that we may make sure that we are trusting in our lives toward the right people. Trusting our parents, trusting our heavenly parent, God, in all God is saying and doing in our lives and what God wants us to do. Help us to trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have Mrs. Hewitt and oh, Mrs. Hulse for Children's Church, if you want to go that way or not, or go back to your parents. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, thanks to Ron Eppert's men's study, they always meet on Wednesday mornings, I found out about an unusual story and a video that went with it. The video is frightening. I'll tell you why. Taken by her phone from inside her car's passenger side, Marie McCrory on her video keeps saying, Oh my God, oh my God. As next to her, a man named Jim drives their car up to a car on the side of the interstate engulfed by flames. The flames are stretching up to 20 feet in the air. Looking at the back end of that car, it seems no one still in that fiery vehicle could possibly survive. But as Marie and Jim pull up closer to that vehicle, they slow down and see, on the, and you can see it on the video, one man running up, opening the door, and pulling the driver out. That rescuer then gets help from two other men 
to pull the victim farther away. Meanwhile, two men on the other side of the car pull the passenger out. Both Ken Williamson, the driver, age 92, and his wife, Joan, 90, were rescued just in time. Marie wants to get out to help as well. And, and two other people are already there to aid the first five responders. This amazing rescue took place in the late afternoon of September 6th, this past September 6th, on the Interstate 8 freeway heading east out of San Diego. The Williamses were on their way back to their home in Phoenix. It seems that, that maybe another vehicle hit their car in the back and started the fire, fire but we don't know. What we do know is that we know what other people thought of those five original rescuers who had been driving in the opposite direction of the interstate, yet they stopped in the median and, and rushed to the scene. One woman later said of them, we got to see these people running across the freeway, freeway and absolutely risking their lives to get these people out. There's no doubt about it. They risked their lives to help other people. From the video, it is clear that there really was a great risk. In fact, the first man who got Ken Williamson out of the car, first of the five, entered the hospital with minor burns. Now, whenever one talks about risking one's life, and the risk to one's life was clear in this instance, fear is the first thing to overcome. Fear sometimes stops us from doing the good deed. I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John, I should say, who said it clearly in his first letter. He said this, that the opposite of love is fear. The opposite of a really sacrificial loving action is an action that, at its root, is instead inspired by fear. And not just any fear. The fear that all of sinful humanity has had to deal with throughout the centuries is the fear of death, and the fear of all the little deaths that occur in life. As we read in Hebrews today, Jesus came to save us from that fear. Today we read, Since therefore the children, that's all of humanity, share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery, by the fear of death. Held in slavery by the fear of death. Now let's think about that for a moment. I believe these verses are among the most important in Holy Scripture. Why? Well, because they go deep, deep into what causes us to be in slavery to sin. Now at first glance, Christ frees us from the fear of death by what the author of Hebrews calls a sacrifice of atonement, his death on the cross, now, that is indeed a huge part of how Christ frees us. But, by rising from the dead and placing into our hearts and souls the courageous spirit of God, Jesus gives us the power to overcome selfishness. And the root of selfishness is our fear of death and our fears of all the other things that, that kind of feel like death for us while we are still alive. And by that I mean... Things like failure, fear of failure, fear, fear of rejection, humiliation, embarrassment, fear of loss and injury. In reaction to those things, in our fear we unfortunately exhibit cowardice, we show pride, addiction, negative things, worry, doubt, and panic. It reminds me of an incident of when I was in high school. I was part of this really neat, really different class called archaeology one semester. Not many small town high schools had archaeology classes. But ours did. Because our small town high school history teacher loved archaeology. And because he had connected himself with a man in town who was a retired archaeologist. We actually had a dig. Archaeology was the last class of the day, so if we had a car available to each of the students, well, each of them would go out to the archaeological dig we had out by the Edwards River. You know that place. About five miles from, from my hometown. And one day, I was driving out to there. Uh, I was late. We were to park along a road by some cornfields. 
And there are already vehicles there. And when I got there, I decided to turn around and have my car conveniently headed in the other direction when we were done. So I turned the car around halfway and then backed out the other direction. But as I did so, the bucket I had sitting next to me that I used for the dig started to fall over. Oh, no. I looked at the falling bucket and shot my right arm out to catch it. So you see, as the car kept going, I wasn't looking in the mirror. And my car hit this new pickup truck parked on the other side of the road. Nice big dent. There was a dent on that truck, but there was not a dent on my old steel-based fender of my parents' old car. Now here's the thing. As I walked to the others already at the dig, I wondered whether I should tell them what happened or try to get away with it, since there was no dent on my car. Why didn't I want to tell them? Well, it wasn't just to avoid getting into trouble, especially with my parents. I also had a fear grip me, a, a fear of being embarrassed, deeply embarrassed in front of my peers, a fear of humiliation. I feared admitting failure. You see, the lies we tell often cover truths we are afraid of. Well, this is just one of the ways the fear leads to sin. Oh, by the way, it was a long several minutes, but I finally told the others what I had done. And I always remember one of my classmates said, boy, it took you some time to tell us. <laughs> one of the ways that fear leads to sin is when our fears lead us to reject the call from God to do this or that for God. Here's an example of that from my own life. You know, I at first rejected God's call to be a pastor because I had said I had turned agnostic. But years later, I figured out why I became agnostic. God told me why. God told me to understand that I was leaning toward agnosticism in that period as a way to avoid God's call to ordain ministry. Can't be a minister if you don't believe in God. On a subconscious level, I was not sure that I believed in and was ready to defend everything that was in the Bible as a pastor. I was afraid that I would be humiliated whenever someone would ask me as a pastor about this or that difficult passage in God's word. And there are difficult passages. It was in letting God get me beyond that fear and beyond those doubts that I was able to accept that call to partner with God. Now, speaking of partnership, you know we Christians are all called to be partners with God in God's mission and ministry. In fact, in Hebrews 3.1 today, we are called holy partners in a heavenly calling. Holy partners. I remember when I was first told that we are called to be partners of God that I thought it sounded pretty weird. After all, God is so great, and we are so puny. Compared to God, puny in both physical power and in spiritual power. Yet each of us is called, as the baptized people of God, to be a partner of God and a minister of some kind. A pastor, you see, is not only one of several elders. A pastor of one of many, is one of many Christian ministers who are called by God in every congregation. You are called by God. As Luther says, we are all consecrated priests through baptism. That's a view which led to our Lutheran doctrine based on the Bible of the priesthood of all believers. As Peter wrote to all Christians of his day, you, all of you, are a royal priesthood. You are God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of God, God who called you out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. Now, God was already in the process of calling out of darkness those five men who stopped by the side of the interstate and proceeded to save the older couple outside of San Diego a month ago. You see, not too long before that, all five of these men were homeless, then each of them got involved in the East County Transitional Living Center called ECTLC. 
ECTLC, I looked up, is a faith-based place whose goal is to end chronic homelessness in San Diego County. One of the things the people who run ECTLC provide as an option is biblical training to their residents. ECTLC's website proclaims that it is a community, not just a shelter, and that they witness miracles every day. The people there are dedicated to transforming lives. Now, when four of these five rescuers, the fifth was still recovering in the hospital, were interviewed right after the event, one of them was told the reporter that, that he was glad the couple was okay, and he said, glad that God took care of them. When asked about why they didn't continue traveling on their side of the interstate and instead stopped, put to the side their fears, and together ran toward the danger and toward the risk, another of the five volunteered and said, well, there was a time when, like so many, I would have, we would have kept driving. But because of programs like ECTLC, we are changing. I'm changing. It makes me think that at that moment, as Christ commanded us two weeks ago, these formerly homeless men were fulfilling God's call on them and on us to be last of all and servant of all. And they were experiencing the great joy of living out that call. I saw this great response again last week when one of our preschool parents accidentally ran into one of our light poles one morning. First time that's ever happened. No, not really. Her son in the back seat was very scared and she was quite frustrated. But before our preschool director Michelle or I could get to the vehicle, two other preschool parents, a couple, firefighters in real life, were already there already there to help assess the situation, keep the family calm, and offer any other aid that was necessary. You see, God had called those two, and they were yet again answering that call to serve. You know, it's, it happens that Shakespeare once had one of his characters point out the importance of being led by love instead of by doubt or fear. Shakespeare knew it was important to put to the side our fears and put to the side our doubts, fears and doubts that get in the way of our doing the Lord's will. You see, Shakespeare wrote, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt it. So let's put aside our, our fears and our doubts. My good friends, God is shaping us, God is molding us, God is transforming us every day into channels of his love and tools for his work. So let us not be afraid. Let us not stand in the way of God shaping, molding, and transforming us. Not stand in the way so that we may be more effective partners in God's heavenly calling. So that we may bring that perfect love already in heaven down to earth. With our partnership with the Lord in mind, let us bring everyone, old and young, to Jesus. To Jesus so that he may take them up in his arms, lay his hands on them, and bless them. They belong to the kingdom as much as anyone else does. It does not matter if you've been, say, homeless, or something else has happened to you that threatens to, in your mind, brand you as worthless. Instead, let us take the Spirit's hand and be led by the Spirit first to the kingdom of love. And that joy, the joy that will follow what we do, will put away all our fears, even, even the fear of death. Amen. Please run. Thank you.
very thankful for the many kinds of offering we have received. There's up there on your screen ways to give online, which some of you have uh, moved to that. And we're thankful. But in any case, no matter how you, your financial support gets to us, we are very, very grateful in the Lord. We're even more grateful for your continued prayers, support, as together we seek to overcome fear and do the work of the Lord. Let us speak the words of the Nicene Creed, proclaiming our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray together. Gracious Lord God, we are thankful that you sent Jesus to save us. Thank you that your son not only did that, but also that then he went as the risen Christ and gave us believers your courageous spirit, O oh God, your courageous spirit that we may overcome both our selfish fear of death and the fears of all those little deaths that keep us from doing your will, namely fear of failure, the fear of rejection, humiliation, and embarrassment, and the fear of loss and injury. May your love overcome our fears, our cowardice, pride, and addictions, our worries, doubts, and panic. Through the author of Hebrews today, Lord, you tell us that you consider us to be your holy partners in a heavenly calling. Help us as your partners to rely on your spirit in order to fulfill that calling as your partners. Listening to the spirit for what we should do. Discerning your will through prayer and Christian discussion. And following through with spirited action and service to those you have placed around us. Help us, Lord, not to put ourselves down to the point where we think that somehow we are not good enough to be your holy partners. That thought is the work of the devil. Instead, let us be confident in your ability to work through us. O Holy Spirit, Please be with others who are in need of your special healing, your great comfort, and your awesome strength. Be with those who are sick or injured in our midst, such as Laura, Maxine, Phil, Lynn, Vaughn, Cheryl, Marion, Craig, Julie, Betty and Jim, and Jane. We pray for all we know who have the coronavirus, Lord. Fill them with your great comfort and healing. We pray for the family of our sister in Christ, Camilla London, who is with you now in heaven. Comfort them, comfort us, help us to support one another with the love you've given us to share. We pray for others as well, Lord, people who are in our hearts in these moments of silence.
We have prayed for these dear ones, O Heavenly Father, and now we place them into your hands, trusting, as always, in your forgiveness and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now for the Holy Communion. And just a word, back at home, if you worship with us regularly, please gather communion elements for yourself. I hope that you have been doing that. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me and my ways. After supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant written in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all sin. Drink this and remember me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now from what you have just received, may that body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace. Amen. Let us sing. benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we thank you for joining us. We continue to post our weekly worship services on our website kogcarmel.org and wherever you are, we're glad that you're joining us. You can see older services there on our website. And uh, they're archived at the bottom of the page. Well, we'll see you again live at 10 a.m. next Sunday. Go in peace and serve the Lord.
have a great week.